Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics, and this is the Trigicon MRO HD and 3X magnifier. First time I saw the new MRO HD was at SHOT 2020, and I was uh, intrigued for a couple of reasons. First reason being that it has dual reticles. Uh, you have two reticles to choose from, which we'll get into, and it can be paired with Trigicon's 3X magnifier. Uh, I like magnifiers, however, one thing I've always been looking for is either a 3 or a 6X magnifier that had reasonable eye relief. Because one of the things I've found with magnifiers in the past, magnifiers for RDSs, is you generally have to choke up considerably closer to the receiver in order to eliminate that scope shadow you get with some magnified uh, optics. Something you don't necessarily see good eye relief um, on the red dot magnifiers. Uh, using like a, a lower variable power optic, like a traditional scope, eye relief is a little bit more forgiving generally than it is on these magnifiers. So that's something I was definitely interested in, but I was also interested to see if Trigicon made any adjustments to some of the complaints that we saw with the original MRO. Getting right into the features of the MRO HD, battery powered uh, red dot or green reticle. The body of the optic is 7075 aluminum, which is robust. Uh, one of the concerns that we had uh, with the original MRO was that battery cap being directly on top of the optic. Um, some people reported that uh, when the optic was inadvertently dropped on that battery cap that uh, the optic stopped working. And that's something that we're gonna get to. Uh, other features include one of the one of the big departures away from the original MRO is now I have two uh, two reticles that I can choose from. I have a two MOA dot or I have a two MOA dot with a segmented circle, uh, similar to like an EOTech or a Hollow Sun five seven five zero eight. That that um, dot within a circle reticle that we we all know and love, or some of us know and love, and that's on the fly. I can twist to that or I can twist back to the two MOA dot, which I found to be super cool. Uh, for general purposes. For extreme, or I should say longer range distance shooting, when I was using the 3X magnifier to shoot out to 100, 200, whatever, uh, I prefer just sticking with the two MOA dot. But when I was sh shooting up close, working at more self-defense ranges, like five yards out to you know 25 or 35 yards, having that segmented circle reticle, uh, more of, an e more of a um, guide, if you will. And that's one of the beautiful things about that reticle is it does help you uh, acquire the dot a little bit quicker um, and it can give you some really fast reference points for your holds depending on what zero you use. Uh, you put in a 50 slash 200 meter zero or a 100 meter zero on this thing using that um, secondary reticle, uh, the bottom of the secondary reticle as a hold is, can be very useful. Also for distance shooting, uh, if you know your MOA on that reticle, you can use that for holds as well. Talking just about the MRO HD, the first thing you're going to notice is a departure from the original MRO is the notch filter, that blue tint, is not as noticeable. I don't personally care uh, about the bluish tint that, that uh, people were complaining about with the original MRO, but I know it was something that uh, people had an issue with. Another thing from the original MRO, at least the first generation of them, was uh, an apparent slight magnification, like a 1.2, 1.3-ish range. That's something I don't really notice with the new uh, MRO HD. Uh, I looked into the literature. I can't find any direct quote that says it is anything other than 1X. And to my eye, looking, you know, primary eye or support side eye, uh, I don't notice any magnification with that. Also, the reticle, both reticles, but just talking specifically about the 2 MOA dot only, uh, reticle is very clean, uh, much cleaner than the smudge you'd see with some of the original MROs. In fact, I have uh, four or five of the original MRO, including like a, a very low serial number, like right as soon as they released the original MRO. And then I have one that I purchased probably a year ago. And you can see a few dif differences, but talking just about the reticle, that two MOA dot, 
the first to the most recent of the original MRO, there was a slight improvement. This dot is definitely more clean, crisp, and more circly, if you will, uh, than what I see with my older generation MROs. The 3X magnifier is flipped aside, comes with a proprietary mount. I'm sure the aftermarket will, will manufacture mounts for it depending on its popularity. One of the things that I found with the mount that I didn't really care for is it's pretty bulky. Uh, leaving my rear uh, backup iron sight on the gun, um, of course magnifier to uh, red dot relationship has to be so that you're able to use it and you want to move it back far enough that you don't have to really crank forward on the gun if you have an eye relief issue, which we'll get to. Uh, what I found is that mount, even using the higher riser that comes with it to give me more of a co-witness between my lower one-third mount on the optic and the uh, magnifier itself, uh, the mount was bumping up against when it was folded into the magnified position. When it was flipped aside, no big deal, but when I flipped it forward to use it, it was bumping into that rear iron sight, which I didn't really care for. I feel like that mount takes up way more space than it needs to, considering some of the other flipped aside mounts that are out there. Magnifier mount is quick release and it has variable tension adjustments depending on the width of your rail versus anodized versus Cerakote. You may have to make small adjustments to get a really good clamp down. Uh, besides the overall what I consider to be bulkiness of the mount itself, uh, I found the flip to side to be uh, very easy to manipulate. Some of them are really, really stiff. I didn't really have that problem with this one. I was able to easily flip it in, flip it out, and kind of manipulate it as needed for the type of shooting I was doing. The eye relief is not very forgiving, however, it is a little bit more forgiving to my eye than some of the other magnifiers that are currently on the market. I found that its relationship to the optic was almost like they were designed for each other, which I believe that they were. Uh, so while I did have to, if I was going from 1X and I was going to flip that magnifier in to shoot out a little further or get a little bit of better PID or whatever, just transitioning from non-magnified to magnified really quick, I did have to move my head forward in order to eliminate that scope shadow. However, it wasn't a considerable issue. It was something I could, you know, easily do. And it's kind of something I'm already used to coming from other magnifiers out there using with aim points and stuff like that. I just got used to the fact that if I was going to run a magnifier, uh, I either had to keep my head in that position the whole time, which I don't care for. I don't like to crank my neck forward that far on a rifle. I like to go full extension on the stock, uh, give me a little bit more stability. Um, when I would flip that magnifier to the side, you know, legacy-wise, you know, talking about using magnifiers throughout my time using magnifiers, I was just so used to coming forward that that's just kind of you know, something I accepted. So the eye relief is not what I would like it to be. However, I do understand the limitations of magnified glass. There is going to be an eye relief that's going to exist. And if you want something in that small of a compact package, it's very hard to get really, really forgiving eye relief. You know, in a perfect world, 3X magnifier would have, you know, five to six inches of eye relief. We're just probably not going to see that anytime soon unless the cost is going to be astronomical. Because the MRO HD and the 3X magnifier sold as a set, that's how I reviewed it. So you know my reviews, 2,000 rounds fired is what we're going to have in a review process. Very first thing I'm going to do after I get the optic mounted, get it zeroed, is a 500 round burn down. I'm going to shoot 500 rounds accelerated uh, as quickly as possible. Generally it takes me, you know, three to four minutes to get those 500 rounds down range in order to see if that accelerated rate of fire causes any issues with the, whatever I'm reviewing, in this case the Trigicon MRO HD and magnifier, that you wouldn't otherwise notice shooting the same 500 rounds but over a much longer period of time. So here's your burn down. Five hundred rounds, no issues. I didn't see any flickering or uh, fading of the reticle that I've seen on some cheaper optics when you get the gun that hot. Uh, so as far as the burn down goes, the MRO HD performed extremely well. Didn't have any issues uh, throughout the burn down process. Probably about the first two two hundred fifty rounds, I, I used just the two MOA dot, and then the second half, I went ahead and switched the reticle really quick over to the two MOA with the six to eight MOA ring. Same deal, no issues at all. One of the things that originally appealed to me about the MRO in general is a wider field of vision versus other red dots on the market. What I found with the MRO that I didn't get from other red dots was uh, passive aiming through night vision. And this is kind of a niche thing, but it's something that's important to me because I do a lot of night vision shooting. 
uh, the original MRO and the MRO HD, it's very easy to passively aim because of that objectively wider field of vision that I don't get for some other optics. So I don't really necessarily have to run a super tall mount. I don't have to go all Jeffrey Giraffe with a 1.93 or a 2.13. And there's nothing wrong with those mounts. I do use them. I do like them. However, uh, if you're just getting into night vision or it's something you're concerned with or you want an optic that's going to not require you to purchase additional things running a lower one-third riser i get really good cheek weld for passive aiming um, using the mro hd also the night vision settings on the mro hd are very good just like the original mro i have dedicated night vision settings that i can use uh, out of the brightness selection that i have both on the two moa and the two moa with the segmented 68 moa circle reticle uh, using passive aiming is something that's uh, something anybody who shoots night vision should should practice. Sometimes shooting passive is going to allow you to be a little bit more accurate. Maybe you can't quite ID the target pushing a laser downrange because the laser diversion causes the laser to be bigger than the target depending on the distance you're shooting at. Or for law enforcement purposes, if you have, you know, bad guy has IR2, uh, being able to passively aim versus shooting a laser downrange uh, can allow you to, to get the hits while still being super sneaky. Uh, without giving your position away if that's something you're super concerned about. You don't necessarily have to have night vision settings because night vision by definition magnifies available light. So on, I know on optics I have that don't have night vision settings like original RMRs uh, or RMR type 2s. I just go to the lowest possible brightness setting. That's my night vision setting. But having dedicated night vision settings is nice. Now something that was brought to my attention about the reticle specifically is even when it's off it was on and that's not true. Uh, what people are seeing, some people have reported that when they look through the reticle when it's off, they can see the reticle and see kind of an electronic blueprint, if you will, kind of like a Tron-ish type thing. That is not power. That's just a reflection off of the emitter when the light hits it just the right way. Uh, pretty much an easy way to, for me to verify that was to look through the optic when it was turned off using night vision, because night vision magnifies available light, and there's no reticle there under those circumstances at night. What you're seeing is a kind of a reflection if the light hits it just right. Which for some people it's gonna bother them, but for me I'm not super worried about what's going on in my optic when it's off. So when I turn it on, that's not something I necessarily notice. Pretty much any red dot optic that's out there, if the sun hits the emitter just right, you're gonna get some kind of refraction or reflection that could cause you to see parts of the reflector you don't normally see. I did attempt to capture that reflection on film. Wasn't able to do it because it's super faint. Cameras can't sometimes pick up the same thing that the human eye can. I wasn't able to capture it. Although someone else out there may have, so if you check around for reviews on the MRO HD, you may find somebody who can show you exactly what I'm talking about. But to me, it's a non-issue. Uh, the reticle's off when it's off. When it's on, it's on. Uh, it's not something I'm necessarily gonna lose sleep over, at least specifically talking about that. Glass clarity is really good. I already talked about the, the magnification, the apparent magnification being one power, uh, and that's exactly what I want. Uh, so we're not getting that slight magnification we saw with the very early models of the original MRO. Continue on with the rest of the review process after that burn down, we get into just using the MRO for uh, just my general practice and specifically checking out that magnifier. Shooting at ranges from five all the way out to 250, I found the magnifier to be good and clean. Uh, using it during the day, absolutely no issues whatsoever. At night, the light collection of the magnifier is does leave a little bit something to be desired, but it's no different than any other 3X or 6X magnifier I've used, specifically talking about other 3X magnifiers that are out there for red dot sights. I didn't notice it being significantly worse than anything else I've used. Again, we're talking about a super compact magnifier for use purposes, so light collection is not gonna be as ideal as I would like it to be. Also, as, as somewhat of an aside, the closer you get it to the optic when you flip, flip it in, uh, to position to use, the more you're depending on the light tra uh, passing through the optic itself to get to the magnifier. Well, a little bit of a gap there. Uh, so there is somewhat of a blockage that does occur, uh, at least in regards to what kind of fil prism filter, notch filters on that optic, um, ruby tinting or whatever, that's blocking certain wavelengths, if you will, of light to allow battery life to be a thing. Uh, at night, if I'm pushing a, uh, enough lumens downrange, I was using a Mod Light OKW, which is which is a significant amount of, of uh, candela. Uh, I was still able to PID at the distances I was shooting the optic at, uh, and be able to get the hits that I wanted to get. So even in low light, uh, if you're if you're using sufficient amount of light, you're not going to have any issues at all. Of course, the elephant in the room is durability. Uh, something I do standardized on all my optic reviews at this point is drop testing. Uh, pretty controversial. 
what I'm doing is I'm using uh, a same height standard on when I'm able to the same surface to enter to introduce a lot of shock into the optic itself to see if that causes any issues be zero or actually kill the optic cause it to just not work anymore I do that with a drop test I shoulder height drop test it generally on concrete sometimes on flagstone sometimes on asphalt depending on what range I'm using and that's exactly what I did with the MRO HD and I left the magnifier on it during the drop testing and left it in the folded for use position to see if I could cause any issues there that's one drop test every 500 rounds during the 2,000 round initial review process. Uh, first thing I'll show you right now is my five round group that I fired at zero distance, which I, I used a 50 meter zero, uh, made my final adjustments at 200 for an actual 200 meter zero. But here's the 5200 group I shot using uh, 77 grain Black Hills. And here's your drop tests. And this is a five round group I fired 50 meters uh, using the same ammunition after the final drop test. Now I would call that zero maintained. Uh, so throughout the 2,000 rounds, four shoulder height drop tests on very hard surfaces, uh, I did not lose zero. Also, those impacts were almost completely or partially on that battery cap slash brightness adjuster, power knob, whatever you want to call it, my, my reticle selector, my brightness selector, and my battery housing. One of the complaints we heard with the original MRO was durability at that battery housing because it was mounted on the top, inadvertent contact or direct drops on it. Uh, if your rifle comes off the sling, like your QD doesn't get locked in well and it just kind of whips around, or if it falls off a tailgate of a truck or something like that, of course the caveat is, check your zero before you trust it. But I just did four shoulder height drop tests during this review process, and not only did the optic continue to work, uh, but it maintained zero. Also, the magnifier was good to go, and the magnifier was still co-witnessed to the, uh, the reticle, the, the body of the uh, MRO HD. Final verdict on the MRO HD, it's a good optic. The magnifier is a good magnifier. Does it mean I'm gonna get rid of all the other red dots I have? No. Uh, one thing that gives me pause is the cost. Uh, I understand that, that more programming and more electronics and, and more design and R&D and all that had to go into having two reticle options on a knob, but there's other companies that do it and they don't charge as much for it. Uh, so I was a little confused as to why the MRO HD had the price tag that it did, considering how much the original MRO cost. Uh, so if you're going to have any potential issue, the MSRP Trigicon is quoting for the MRO HD, especially the set between the MRO HD and the magnifier, uh, is, is pretty pricey. Uh, and that's not something necessarily that, that I don't want to say it's not worth that cost. However, I can get the same performance for similar money from, from other red dots that are out there. So what, what we're really looking at is, are you willing to spend the money to get the features that this has at this tier of quality, if you will, that you can't get anywhere else currently? Having those two reticle options in this particular package with an enclosed emitter and have a 3X magnifier and a flip to side, and if your brand loyalty is a thing, you're looking at Trigicon, then this is a great package. If you're getting into rifles just now, or you want another red dot or you haven't owned a red dot previously you've been using you know variable magnification optics or just iron sights you're looking at your first red dot this isn't a bad choice uh, I can't say that it significantly does anything better than what else is out there but I will say just speaking about uh, the MRO HD it's a massive improvement over the original MRO uh, in all facets really every feature is better uh, having the two reticle options is awesome if you pair it with the magnifier while I don't really care for the magnifier mount, and as soon as someone gives me an aftermarket option, I'm going to run out and purchase it immediately, uh, having this paired combination, uh, factory paired combination, is pretty awesome. So, MRO HD is a good optic. Uh, it's durable, uh, maintains zero through some you know pretty extreme situations. Battery life is excellent. Glass quality and clarity is good. We're using in low light, under night vision, magnifier even uh, is good to go in those respects. Uh, so if you're looking for a red dot for the first time, this isn't a bad choice whatsoever. However, my, me personally, I would wait until a third party starts making mounts for their magnifier before you get the magnifier combination because that magnifier mount just takes up way too much room. 
and if you leave your buis on your rifle, your rear iron sight, my, I was using Inbus Pros, uh, it is going to have a relationship issue that you're going to have to contend with and you might have to put your magnifier in a less than optimal place because it's going to bump up uh, against that rear folding sight and that's not something we necessarily want. Other than that, it's a great optic uh, and I would recommend it. I'm Eric Cowell with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.